Hi everyone, my name is Tori, this is Nova Life, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have some second chance romances to share with you. I absolutely love second chance romances, so I had so much fun putting together this list of romance recommendations for you because it's literally my favorite thing to read. Literally my favorite thing to read. But before we get into the romance recommendations for this video, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is LJ Evans. So she has this whole Painted Daisy series. Each one of these books follows the different bandmate of this all-girl group called the Painted Daisies. And in this first book, Sweet Memories, basically we follow the pianist or keyboardist for the group. And what I liked is that she has really bad panic attacks. So that representation is in this book, which I always love when we have representation like that in romance books specifically. But this also has a little bit of a suspense element along with the second chance element and a bad boy element, which is literally all things I love. So our female character, she, you know, meets this guy, Jonas, at the studio, becomes friends with him, but all things kind of go to hell when her sister is murdered, and it kind of all points to his past, and so all these things start coming up, and she just cannot forgive him, and they kind of, like, part ways. The other part of this book is their second chance where he will not stop until our female character, Paisley, is next to him and is safe from everything that's going on, which I always love that protectiveness in a hero when, like, something else is going on, and he's like, I have to protect her. I'm the only one that can protect her. It's one of my favorite things to read. But the fifth book in the Painted Daisies just came out, so definitely check out this series if it is something that you are into. I also have never read a romance book or series where it's an all-girl group, which I thought was very, very cool. But all of them are all women in the group, um, and each book focuses on one of the group members. So, yeah. The fifth book just came out, but you can read all five now. Um, I'll have a link in the description box below where you can check out and read if you want to. But thank you so much to LJ Evans for sponsoring this video. Definitely go check it out if it sounds right up your alley. Along with Sweet Memory as a recommendation for a second chance, I also have Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. Kennedy Ryan writes very emotional, very emotional romances, okay? And I wouldn't say a lot of her stuff can be considered second chance, but this is one of her newer releases that I really love. I, I technically call it second chance chance even though it's more of a marriage in trouble. Our characters are actually divorced when this book starts and you see because they have two kids they still have to co-parent. They still have to do things together which I mean it makes it very difficult when you're forced to do things together especially with an ex and you have to like act like nothing happened. Um, but basically throughout this book Kitty Ryan really writes about therapy a lot um, with this romance about how her son has to start going to therapy and the husband, her ex-husband, our female character's ex-husband starts going to therapy as well for the son because he wants to be like a good example. And I think it's so important to have like mental health representation in books and just make it normal because a lot of people do struggle with that. So I love reading you know, any books that have, you know, in this case, like Sweet Memory, it has, has panic attack and anxiety representation. And in this case, our female character is also going through her own therapy journey with depression and stuff like that. There's, um, she has some PTSD from things that happened in her past. So definitely check triggers for this because while Kennedy Ryan writes emotional stuff and it is such a great love story, the way that the characters in this book find themselves like back together and like that full circle journey of how they had to like split up to like come back together again it is so beautiful to read second chance is literally just one of my favorites because you do have this history but you also have to talk about it and then move forward from that so i mean i feel like she writes such good books anyway but before i let go very amazing second chance romance the next one i have is between hello and goodbye by emma scott so this is a special edition kind of paperback that she had at book bonanza it's shiny i prefer matte but i still think it's very very pretty with the flower so this book it opens up with the meeting in hawaii together so our female character she is from the city she's from seattle and she is like i need a break from work where her boss is like you need a break from work you need to you know get away get it together you know what i mean and she goes to hawaii and while she's in hawaii she goes on a little hike in the what Hawaiian jungle I guess you could call it I don't know what to call it um but basically she sprains her ankle and the person who she starts having a romance with is the person who comes and saves saves her and helps her out now what gets me is that like this is this is a book where it's like the right person the wrong time so they do have like this moment together where both of them, you know, just have this, I think it's like two weeks where she's in Hawaii and they kind of just like become like really good friends, but also on like underneath all of that is like this budding romance that they both start feeling for each other, but they still try to make it work where she goes to the city and he stays in Hawaii because they have their own separate lives, you know what I mean? But then like kind of halfway through the book, you see that 
certain things happen and you know you just can't stop them and they kind of have to make a decision and the second half of the book is them coming back together and finding their way back to each other and finding their love again and it's what literally one of my favorite things to read like I cried reading this book I think it is such a beautiful book Emma Scott does write once again emotional romances but for some reason I feel like sometimes with the second chance it just makes the emotion so much more I don't know why but it does and I loved loved this book loved love this book if you haven't read it it's a perfect book for summer because a lot of it takes place in Hawaii and they're on the beach and you know just like perfect setting like you can visualize everything okay perfect the next book I have is The Summer We Fell by Elizabeth O'Rourke so <laughs> this is another very emotional romance and while I am someone who doesn't like past to present all too much I think Elizabeth O'Rourke wrote this so well to where the past to present works perfectly for their story this book spans years okay like years they get together they're not even together at the beginning of this book they don't even get together until the end of this book so it's I say a second chance but it's a very like light second chance it's because <sighs> basically our female character at the time when I think it was her senior the summer before her senior year her boyfriend at the time was at college and so he comes back for the summer um so it's her going into her senior year and her boyfriend going into his sophomore year pretty sure it's going into his sophomore year well he brings a friend home so it's the three of them kind of like hanging around but she also lives with his parents even though he's not there because her fa her her family life and her home life was really really bad she just had to leave and they took kind of took her in there's a lot of talk about religion in this book because um our female character's boyfriend at the time is a pastor um but the friend that comes to stay like looks at the female character you know how like two souls who have been damaged and been crushed like you can kind of just like see that in another person sometimes not that they give off this vibe you can just recognize that in another person that's basically what happens now they don't have any like super romance that happens but it's one of those things where she kind of keeps his di keeps her distance from him and vice versa he keeps her the distance from her because they don't want to fall into that you know what I mean they don't want to like get caught up in all of that stuff but I tell you the past to present works so well they come back home because the person who raised her so her ex-boyfriend at the time now her ex-boyfriend's mom is like opening this kind of like a foster home for like teenagers to come and stay kind of like what she and he did and it was just it was a beautiful story it was right person wrong time and they have a lot of healing to do because a lot of things happen uh with them and their story and the friend and all of this like it is love triangle it's emotional okay and it's angsty and I loved it so I'm gonna throw this in there a second chance just because it is second chance and I loved it the next book I have is Until I Get You by Claire Contreras so a lot of people will kind of you know promote this book as a hockey romance I personally don't think it's a hockey romance um there's not very much hockey in it now he is a hockey player at the beginning of the book in college and a little bit in his adult life you see when it kind of like time skips but it's not hockey so don't going into don't go into this book thinking it's like dark hockey romance it's not it's more of like a romantic suspense with some darker elements a little bit but basically you see both of our characters at the beginning of the book they're in college together and they have this like three month thing where they just fall madly in love with each other but she has a past that is slowly catching up to her and it's like one of those things where this very powerful person that has a lot of money is like doing anything to make sure her happiness like she doesn't have happiness in her life so it's very sad that what happens but when our main male character gets injured because of that because of you know who she's associating with like him he's associating with her she kind of just ups and leaves um and doesn't really tell him what's going on so he has spent the last three years trying to figure out where she's going and where she's been when that happens that's when their second chance aspect comes in and they're kind of you know he's mad he has every right to be mad he doesn't understand why she left no one told him what's going on so when he finds her in this super small town he's like i'm gonna torture you I'm going to kill you, basically. Like, he wants to get his revenge. But then he realizes a lot of things that are happening that he wasn't expecting to come up, as in this person, you know, is trying to make her life a living hell. And he's like, why don't you tell me? It's one of those things. So while it does have a lot of romantic suspense, I didn't mind it. And that's coming from someone who really doesn't like a lot of romantic suspense, but it was a good book. And I would highly recommend it for a second chance because it was really good. And it's very steamy. And I like that. The next book I have is Happy Place by Emily Henry. So yes, this is a second chance romance. And I actually think this is a very, very good second chance romance because it tells the story of what's the word? So a lot of people are of the mindset that with a second chance romance, you kind of have to like 
work things out together. Like a lot of people think with a relationship, like you have to stick with it and work it out no matter what, like you stick together. You know what I mean? And not everyone's like that. There are some couples out there that will ride through anything together. They will rather stay together than like break up. They'd rather work through it together. But sometimes that's not always possible with couples. But I found with romances, the way it is in happy place, some people don't like that kind of, that kind of second chance romance. Okay. But I will say it worked for me. So basically our female character, um, she has a group of girlfriends that every summer they go to one of their friends' parents like kind of beach house or whatever. They spend a week together. They do all these fun things. They have like Taco Tuesday. They go to the beach one day. They do this and they do that. You know, they have a whole list of things they always do, right? Now with this though, she, they've invited all of their partners because this is one of the years that they have all have partners together, right? Well, no one knows that her and her now ex-fiance is an ex-fiance. No one knows that they kind of broke off their engagement. And it's one of those things that you really get to see with them being forced together. They're forced to work through things that I ne they never did before, which is really eye-opening because sometimes you think it's like the smallest things that drives a wedge in between people's relationship. But sometimes like those are like big things, even though it seems like a small thing. And when you look back on it, you're like, mm, I wish I would have just talked to you about it. But like in that moment, there was so much other things going on with life that you didn't have the chance to talk. So I really, really like this. Um, I liked how both of them had different perspectives and they both needed to talk things out. Uh, I personally loved it. I think it was great. I really enjoyed this book by Emily Henry. It is a really good summer romance as well because they're all like doing summery things on vacation, but highly suggest this one as well. And the last second chance romance I have is Hail Mary by Candy Steiner. So this one, I would say it's second chance, but it's not as second chance as some of these things. It's one of those things where they kind of had a chance. They had a first chance, but he really screwed it up because of that. They never really got to have that first chance, if that makes sense. <laughs> so basically, the reason why I really like this book by Candy Steiner is you see both of our characters are in high school. They start becoming friends because they're both gamers. So if you don't know this, if you own a PC or an Xbox or a PlayStation, you can voice chat with a lot of people in the game, in their community, like you can make parties and stuff like that, or just in game. And she starts becoming friends with this guy, our main male character in this case, and they start chatting and like really opening up to each other. Like it's different when you have an online where you don't really see their face. You feel like you can be more open. You know what I mean? Well, come to find out they both go to the same high school. He is the very popular, I think it's football. Yeah, football player for the high school. And she is one of those people that kind of like go underneath the radar. Not many people look at her. She's still like in her awkward high school era. Like I don't want to say she's unattractive because she's not. It's just like, you know, people develop at different times, you know, and there's other, you know, girls in their high school that kind of like pick on her for that. So when she finally gets the courage to go up to him and be like, hey, I'm the person that you've been talking to online. He's like, what are you talking about? That's not me. So he basically completely like shuns her. Fast forward a couple years, they're now in college and she is one of the friends of another guy's on the team's girlfriend. Like they all know each other. This is a fourth book in the Red Zone Rival series. So each couple, there's three other couples leading up to it. So she, Mary is one of the female character's friends. So because she is older, she obviously looks different. She also has a lot of tattoos and stuff like that. He still doesn't know who she is. She knows who he is, but he just still doesn't know who she is. And so like she spends this whole time saying like, I hate you get away from me like it's enemies to lovers but he's like pining after her and when she finally tells him he's like what the fuck like he's like horrified right and I really liked it so it's a different take on a second chance but I would kind of consider it a little bit of a second chance because after that like him hurting her she has to kind of like let go of that to move forward in a romance with him you know so it's a lot of healing with that too so that's why I kind of think it's a second chance because she has to like get over that hurt that happened you know and they kind of did really build up this friendship relationship type thing over like voice chat and stuff like that because it was a long time that they were chatting with each other so love this one by candy love this one those are all my second chance romance recommendations i have to share with you once again thank you to lj evans for sponsoring this video definitely check out sweet memory with the link in the description box below for a really good second chance romance bad boy anxiety mental health representation all of the above but thank you so much for watching for the emoji for this video what kind of emoji what is a second chance emoji Ooh, do the heartbreak where it's like the mending it has a little mending thing i'll put it in the title of the video it's like a little Haha, if you've made it this far, let's drop that one in the comments down below. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more content for me. As always, I hope you're living a novel life, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.